Hey, what's going on? Uh, it's been a while. Uh, if you're watching this video now, you have some questions about setting up your Volvo electric power steering pump in whatever project you're using, whether it's a drift car or street car, rat rod, whatever you're building, you want power steering. It's simple, it's electric, hydraulic, three wires. It's easy, it works. Um, there's been a lot of questions that I've had personally at the track, on, on YouTube, other places that asking me how things work, to go in more in depth of how it feels, things like that. So I figured I'd make another video, uh, not that little video I had already posted about me doing some wiring. We're actually gonna go through it today and talk about it. Um, so I figured I would just go ahead and get started, jump in, show you what I've got going on, and uh, go from there. Um, it's a little dark in here, so have to forgive me for the lighting, but I got a flashlight, we'll try to get that sorted out. So. What we have here is a Volvo electric power steering pump out of, this one is out of a S40, I believe. I can't remember exactly, but they come in like X70s and different things. Google will have all that information to tell you which ones you need to go to the junkyard and source. Um, it's pretty simple. You basically find anywhere in the car, anywhere in your car that will have space for this. And then you have three wires really you have these are the plugs that come with it if you can cut the plugs so you have them um, you got a red wire ground wire and then on this plug you have three wires which two of them are for signal for like your speed and steering and then you have this one which is a trigger wire so all you're gonna need to do is wire up these three wires Basically how I did that was I have all of my battery power coming into my switch on this side and then it goes through on this side and then from here I just run a straight wire I think this is six gauge eight gauge something like that into a 60 amp fuse which I have a zip tie because this fuse holder sucks and then straight into the power side of the pump. And then my ground, which I've done the same thing with my batteries, I have this post welded up down here. That's where all my negative ground comes in for the car. And then it goes to my engine, and I have my power steering pump grounded with the engine. And then on this wire right here, which is your trigger wire, this will basically just send the signal telling the pump to actually turn on. And that is quite easily just, I have power steering toggle switch right there. Basically that toggle switch triggers a relay, which then triggers the pump telling it to turn on. And then I've got, I also kept the original hard line that comes out of the pump. And then I put an AN fitting on the end. I ran that AN fitting down through some heat shielding underneath the alternator and into some 6AN lines on the actual rack. And then my return, I do have a return line that runs underneath and it comes up through a small, very small power steering cooler before it goes back into the pump on the bottom side on the return side. So there you have it. It's Honestly, really simple setup. It doesn't matter where you put the pump. The farther away from the rack you put the pump, you're gonna have two things. You're gonna have more fluid for one, which is gonna provide better cooling in some some instances in terms of, you know, you have more fluid, so it's less to get hot. But on the other instance, you also have more fluid. So therefore, if something happens at the track, you know, you got to source a lot of fluid. And I personally use this stuff right over here, which is this uh, Pentosin 11S. It is the uh, factory you know, specified fluid for Volvo pumps. I don't know if it has something to do with the electric pump or not, but I never wanted to risk it, so I didn't try it. Any other fluid at least. I did have another pump that I put in there and accidentally uh, 
let the trigger wire ground out on a header one day and short of the pump. So whatever you do when you put it in, make sure all of your wires are away from everything metal. They're not going to flop around. They're shielded. They're protected. And you should really be good. And I've never had any issues out of it. In terms of uh, steering feel, it's it, it's really nice. It, at low speeds, it feels like a factory 240SX. Um, moderately light, you know, not heavy. Under drifting, I don't know if it's just the angle that I have or whatever, but when you get all the way over to full lock and you have to bring it back a little bit, it can be heavy. Now, I don't know if that's the pump or if that's just because my wheel's over at 65 degrees and it's just harder to pull back at that point. Um, but overall, it works. It feels great. I don't have any complaints personally. I can actually turn it on and show you real quick what it's like inside the shop at least i mean sitting still we have it's quite simple <clears throat> turn your switch on and two seconds later the pump triggers and i don't know if you can hear it whining but it's going and then one-handed it's really pretty simple to turn but I also have some uh, video of in-car footage um, I'll try to post that in right here just so you guys can see the effortlessness of it while I'm driving I'm not wrestling with the car some people have driven it and said it feels like they're wrestling it but Every car is different. So they're driving their car. They jump into this one for the first time. And it is one of, the, one of those things. Um, I'm not really sure what else I can go over. If you have any more questions or anything, feel free to ask. Um, I'll do the best I can answering it and try and post more videos or whatever I can to help. Understand uh, these things are really simple. I know there's not a lot of information out there about them. It's you just have to search and search and search. So hopefully this really clears it up for a lot of you. All right. Bye. <laughs>